The Battle of Nablus was fought from April 5 to April 8, 2002 in the Palestinian city of Nablus in the West Bank between the Israel Defense Forces and Palestinian Forces, as part of Operation Defensive Shield in the Second Intifada. It resulted in an Israeli victory. Chapter 1, Prelude Of all the West Bank towns, the IDF General Staff was particularly concerned about the expected resistance in Nablus, and especially in its Kasbah. Hamas and Fatah had launched dozens of suicide bombers. Despite a previous successful raid on Balata, the General Staff still estimated hundreds of armed men would be entrenched in the city, causing the IDF heavy casualties. Two days after the start of Defensive Shield, an extension of the operation north of Ramallah, to Nablus and Jenin, was approved. Originally, the mission was given to a reserve division, but was later transferred to the more experienced West Bank Division. The division's commander, Brigadier General Yitzhak Gershon, received two regular infantry brigades, the Paratroopers Brigade and the Galani Brigade, along with a reserve armored division. A private contractor allowed the commander of the paratroopers 890th Battalion to use a construction site for training for three days. There was a near mutiny among one reserve armored platoon, who claimed they were not properly trained for urban warfare. High-ranking armor officers eventually talked them into joining the operation. Chapter 2 Battle Israeli armored and infantry forces quickly occupied most of the city, with clashes taking place around refugee camps. Israeli Air Force attack helicopters fired rockets at Palestinian defenses in Nablus Main Square and neighboring streets, but to minimal effect. The Nablus Kasbah was attacked by two battalions simultaneously, using two different fighting methods. The Galani Brigade pushed in using Aixarit armored personnel carriers and armored bulldozers to clear away barricades. The Galani Brigade engaged the Palestinians in heavy street combat, forcing many to withdraw to the western part of the Kasbah, where they were attacked by the Paratroopers Brigade. The Palestinians in the Kasbah were deployed in small squads, consisting of two to four men, with each squad in charge of a sector. Explosive charges were set between the alleys and shooting positions were taken. Nasser Badawi, an Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade's commander, said we are waiting for the Israelis to get out of their armored vehicles and fight us on the ground. The paratroopers advanced by sending several small forces at the same time to take over houses in the Kasbah and confuse the Palestinian fighters. Often, the Palestinians would expose their positions to Israeli military snipers by firing at Israeli forces in another direction. Palestinian commander Ahmed Tabuk was among those killed by sniper fire. On April 8, the Palestinians announced their willingness to surrender. The acceptance of the surrender was postponed by two hours, during which the paratroopers killed more Palestinian fighters. According to a later lecture by the paratroopers' brigade commander, Colonel Aviv Kokavi, Israeli Chief of Staff Shaul Mufaz, was unhappy with the fact that two other Palestinian towns, Kalkalia and Talkam, had surrendered almost without Palestinian casualties. Mufaz argued that it was better not to leave armed men in Nablus, who would resume their attacks on the IDF after the withdrawal. Chapter 3, Aftermath About 70 Palestinian fighters, and 8 civilians were killed. At least one IDF officer was killed by friendly fire. Hundreds of Palestinians were arrested. High-ranked wanted persons, such as Nasser Awais of Fatah and Husam Badran of Hamas, fled east to Tubas. They were arrested a week later. The IDF also claimed to have exposed explosive labs. According to UNESCO, hundreds of buildings were affected. Sixty-four were severely damaged, 17 of which had particular heritage significance, including the Obad al Hadi Palace. Four buildings were completely destroyed. The United Nations estimated the property damage at $110 million.